And tonight, look who it is. Yes. Me. Welcome back. So our guest tonight is a bit of a legend. His name is Mark Cleary. Some people here I don't know him. Some of you are fans. Don't work with him. Um, Mark has been working in the area of um, healing. Uh, he trained in martial arts and he also worked um, with a therapy called the Matsu. And he runs retreats um, in Ireland and also in Spain where he teaches uh, some of his techniques. He's a bit of a legend and we had an event a year ago and we covered a lot of topics so we're going to pick up where we left off last time. Before we start, I just want you all to give Mark a big welcome. Positive night. Not to live up to legend status. Now, legend status, yeah. It's great to have you back, Mark. Great to have you back. It's on. It's on. I think it should be. Thanks. Yeah. You're okay? Yeah, yeah. Great. So just check the sound in. Everybody hear me okay? The back? Yeah. Don't mind Mark. him, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> as long as you can hear him. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for having me. You're the wise one. Yeah. So tonight our topic is emotions, yep. chakras, and healing. Mm. Okay. So the first question I'm going to ask you is what led you to, your work has changed slightly, not significantly, but a little bit. You've kind of tweaked it. The more people you work with, you're starting to see um, illnesses kind of correlate with what's going on in an individual chakra. Yeah. So what was the big, what was the big reveal that kind of opened that up for you? Um, it wasn't any one thing, yes. just watching people over the years. Watching me, I suppose, as well, developing. Like when I started out, it's, it's 30 years this year, getting old, but um, when I started out, it was purely as a physical therapist. And then, that de as I developed as a person, obviously the work was changing and it's just where I'm at right now. Um, in the last few years, I've really, really seen a pattern in people that I'm, it's like I'm seeing deeper into why they're not well. And that in some funny way then is attracting a different type of client to me. Um, where in the past it was all pains and aches and now it's people coming with more serious problems, you know, so. Yeah. Okay. And just explain the chakra system to us. Maybe we'll go through each chakra and just explain what emotions are kind of housed there, what kind of issues are housed there. So we'll, where do you want to start? Do you want to start at the bottom or the yeah, top? I'll start at the bottom. Okay, okay. And again, this is, right, this is my theory on it because chakras have been mentioned for thousands of years and you can pick up many books and read about them and there's different understandings. And that's the great thing about the Vedic teachings. Um, because no matter what you read in those teachings, it's for the individual. And when I started coming across this chakra system first, being the skeptic, I was like, what the hell is this? Here's another mystical thing that I'll never truly understand. But I thought, you know, maybe, especially when I trained with Deepak and he seemed to be using meditations on the chakra system. We would, we would, would meditate at his classes for a full hour on the seven chakras. Um, repeating mantras into each one. And that got me thinking, how can I bring that into the clinic? How can I, because you know, someone's coming in with a pain in their back, they just want to get rid of their pain in the back. Yeah. They don't want to hear the mystical <coughs> stuff. But I wanted to think, can I, can I connect the two of them? Can I make this, can I bring the mystical into the real life and does it mean anything? And that's what got me looking at people in a different way. Um, and okay, if you hurt yourself, you have an injury, you come in, you get an injury fixed, you're gone, it's fine. But it's like, why does it keep repeating on a person? Why is it that area of the body? That's what got me asking. And the words that are connected to, let's say the root chakra, are words like stability. Um, the emotion, if you call it emotion, would be, if you, if you think of stability, right, that root chakra is at the base of the spine but it's at the base of the biggest joint in our body. And when we stand up, that has to be stable to, to keep us up. That sacroiliac joint has to be stable. So you have the likes of stability as a word that think kind of make it strong on a physical level. But on an emotional level, it's like um, the root chakra. Think about that for a moment, the roots. So it's like, how deep are your roots? And what's the words that correlate there and the first words that come to mind or come to that area is like 
self-esteem and confidence. So if a person is low in self-esteem and confidence, how can they grow from that? They're going to grow, like I always compare it to, you know, think of the biggest trees in the world and imagine how deep their roots are. Um, and then think of a weak tree that gets blown over in the wind. You know, then think of a person. If my roots are really deep and I have real belief and confidence in who I am, I'm not going to get knocked emotionally. You know, when, when a barrage comes at me like a hurricane in the wind, if that's coming at me, can I handle it? And I was, as I was seeing people coming and going and repeating coming back to me, then as I get to know them, I'll, I'll ask them, how, how are you about yourself? How's your confidence? And inevitably they'd say, oh, no, mm. I don't have confidence. What's that? I, these are the answers I was getting. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Um, now I have something to look towards. So I always think um, the roots of a person, what feeds our roots? And as roots, family, how we grew up, is that what you're talking about? No, or are you talking deeper than that? No, I, again, obviously we're influenced by our family, but you're dealing with an individual right here, right now. So how are you? Let, yeah, the family thing can have an influence, but um, how do we develop you as a person within even that family unit? So it's like, um, where are you getting the food for your roots? You know, a tree, a big tree, will dig down deep into the ground and pull up all the minerals it needs. It won't get it from the surface, it'll get it from deep. How do we feed this chakra, this energy system? We feed away our thoughts. Mm. So our thoughts are the food for our roots. So if I'm constantly thinking, I'm no good because I have no confidence or self-esteem, the roots are never going to go deep. Okay. They're never going to go strong. Okay. So it can't grow strong from there. <clears throat> and this is what I was getting as I connected with people or asked them certain questions. The feeling was that, wow, the amount of people out there who actually don't believe in themselves and okay. are struggling. And that's, all, that's the correlation you that's, feel with lower back pain. It's always, the, it's always something to do with it, Again, if you just hurt your back because you can get the question, but what happens if I just fell down the stairs? Yeah, you hurt your yeah, back. That's yeah. easy. That's not, this is, I'm talking about the stuff that's embedded in you. Mm. Why can't that? I've gone to 10 different people and they can't fix my back. So then they end up with me and I'm like, well, you're a wicked good therapist there. I wonder. Let me ask you a few things about yourself. I was getting the same answers all the time. Mm. So then I can confidently say to the person, well, maybe you have to look at who you are. Maybe you have to, have to ask yourself, are you creating this from a place? And the first step to healing it or letting go of it is becoming aware of it. Yeah, Okay. absolutely. And then obviously you bring in body work or breath yeah. work or to yeah. deal with that. But let's go on to the next chakra, yeah. uh, which well, the, is... Tell the us next one that. is just below the navel. Mm. It sits where our sexual organs are. So again, I'm thinking, well, what do we do with our sexual organs? We, we, mm. we connect with people, with other people. Um, we create life from them, but then bring that inward. So if my self-esteem is low, my confidence is low, how am I connecting with myself? What am I creating inside of me? Because this is all about the self. Um, and again, I'm not going to create much good if the self-esteem, if the roots are low. So again, how many people am I meeting with that are stuck here? And you're getting into illnesses now. You're getting into things like constipation, which is huge. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that tell you about the constipation. <coughs> um, menstrual problems in women, prostate problems in men and so on, all these areas. Think about the amount of issues that bell cancers, you know, a, a lifetime of this builds and builds and builds and manifests. And that's what I'm meeting now. And as I ask these questions to people, they're all telling me the same thing back. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, the, the person comes in with a serious problem and I ask them a simple question about how are you? How are you about yourself? Do you understand who you truly are? And they just start crying in front of you. Those questions, they feel it. It's like, wow, okay. is this what I'm doing to myself? Mm. And then it begins to unravel. It yeah. begins to heal. And you've seen this, you're working at this, with this model a lot, are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. In the groups I teach, yeah, the yeah. people are coming to the groups and trying to get this into their psyche that 
you're the one that can take care of yourself. And it's true. I mean, the body holds trauma. Yeah. It's a map of what's gone on for us. So the chakras are energy centers where energy kind of moves a in a healthy way. Yeah. In the healthy chakra, it's moving a certain way. Yeah. So it's feeding new information if new information needs yeah. to go in there. That's what you're trying to do. If we switch our thoughts. Mm. Yeah. To okay. Our, our thoughts are definitely the things that feed our energy system. And we are just a big bundle of energy. If you listen to Bruce Lipton <coughs> talk about it, as a, what's he, he's, um, he's, a, uh, he's a scientist on... Uh, oh, a cell uh, what's the name of the thing he what's teaches? He's a, he's, a, he's a cellular scientist or something, isn't he? There's a, there's a word for what he teaches, though. But if you, if you listen to his explanation... To do with the environment. Yeah. yeah. But about us being an energy system. And he's, not, he's just one of the modern ones that has spoke about this. The yogis have been speaking about this forever, you know? Um, Joe Dispenza, you know him? Yeah, yeah, he's he, the same. Yeah. He has a meditation called Blessing the Energy Centers. Yeah. And you go through each chakra and you bless it. Mm. And it's really nice meditation, actually. And but let's go to the next next one yeah well again <coughs> as you come up through the body the seven of them right so um again jumping back to your confidence your self-esteem your connection with who we are if they're weak the third one is such an important one because it's where our inner voices our solar plexus our central nervous system and the amount of people with anxiety you know, think about anxiety for a moment. You put your hand on there with somebody with anxiety and you'll feel the buzz. Mm. It's vibrating at a level that it shouldn't be vibrating at. And if I'm not real in those base chakras, how am I ever going to listen to an inner voice that's always going to try and talk to me? Everything. How many times have you heard yourself saying, I should have, I should have done that, I knew. How many times do we stop that in our voice? Now, if I've no confidence or self-esteem or connection with myself, how am I gonna listen to this little voice in there? Now, if you jump back into the yogic teachings and we are beings that have been around forever, this living thing inside of us, then it's full of wisdom and it always knows the truth and we're shutting it down because we don't have the confidence or belief in ourselves to listen to a real truth that's coming from within. Now, if that's jumping up and down all day long for 10, 15, 20 years, trying to tell you something, is it gonna get anxious if you're not listening? You know, it, this is, when it talk to the person with anxiety, ask them, do they ever listen to themselves? They go out all the time to take advice. They don't trust who they truly are. Mm. And that's what's going on. Just in martial arts as well, because that's your background, a big part of your background, that's the Dan Tien, is it? Yeah. And that's where we hold self-esteem, yeah. as you just said. And I think it's, it's a funny one because in, in, uh, there's, a, there's a kind of a vibe going on at the moment that we, the shift in consciousness is to move into our heart center, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which feels more expansive, more open, you know. But most of us in the West would kind of live from here. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But then in, mar in, in, in the East as well, in martial arts, they would tell you to kind of, How's your energy here? What's yeah, your take on that? Because it's very intelligent, that area in your body. Really deep intelligence is within there. And if, see, you can say, let's all get up and work from our heart, right? But how is the road to your heart if this is the road to your heart? So do you go up into your heart as a person with no confidence? Or do you go up into your heart to know that? The, the way I see it is, if, if I have these three lower chakras under the heart working, if I'm confident, if I'm connected to truly who I am, then I'm gonna listen to myself. And that's gonna build even more confidence and connection with myself. And it's gonna send me into my heart, believing in who I am. And then I'm gonna have a lot of respect and love, because love is, there's your love center. Now, if I'm gonna love from here or function from here, I want that to be real, not a fake conf lack of confidence that, you know, we can fall in love outwardly and many people do, but why do so many relationships fall apart? Because it's kind of like a weak, insecure love rather than if I build this first and really get into here with a great foundation, I'm going to have so much respect for myself that I'm only going to look for real true love. Mm. I'm going to hold that real true love. 
I'm not going to tolerate a weaker sense of love, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where if I'm coming from that weak place, I'm going to just grab love as it's flying by and put up with the crap that comes with a weaker love. You, you so it kind of you feed that dysfunctional so relationship in. <clears throat> I got this vibe recently about the love. Uh, the feeling I got was that so most of us are going around looking for it, right, off another person, Every one of us which is a bit tricky, right? Yeah, yeah. Because you're relying on this other person to love you all the time. Absolutely. Whereas if you, what you're saying there is if you get your chakras kind of aligned, so you get to a place of where you kind of have this love inside yourself, yeah. and then you say to someone who also has that balance, you want to just celebrate this between us? Yeah. Rather than you give me that and I'll give you this, which is kind of a bit of an old paradigm that doesn't really work. Yeah, but when you, when you have that within yourself, you're going to have freedom in the love that you share. You're not going to have insecurity because you're going to have respect for you and the person that you're sharing that way. Mm -hmm. And they're going to respect it back on that level. It's a whole different level. It's a whole different level whole of relationship. Level, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So it does bring a lot of freedom, as, which is what we're all looking for as yeah, well. Yeah. Know, so. But when you work with the heart chakra, for example, what kind of issues have you seen there in people? And well, the big one that, the, re the one that really brought this home to me was people suffering with breast cancer. And every woman I have asked for breast cancer, tell me about your heartache. They, it just spills out. And God loved them. And it can be heartache on many different levels. It can be, it can go right back to childhood or it can be, I was married and I broke up and it has broken me in two, you know. Um, and you just meet it on so many different levels. They may have lost a child, they may have lost a mother, father, they were, they were really close to, it doesn't really matter, but the understanding that there's trauma locked in there then, and it's locked in, and then it builds with the next trauma and so on and so on, and it's like they never get a break, and then boom, something develops. And I, I truly believe this now as well. In men, so men don't get breast cancer <coughs> as much as women, but so many men around my age group. Heart like attacks. Yeah. Heart attacks. From mid 40s up, the amount of guys that drop dead. Mm. And what do guys are great at shutting it down. Shut it down, shut it down, shut it down. Don't express the pain I'm feeling. And then boom, it's gone. You know, and yeah, I'm, I'm 58 and so many of my lifelong friends are gone. And, and especially in the last two years. Wow. Wow. And if I go around each of them individually, what happened to him, what happened to him, the stories are just like, oh my God, yeah. Yeah, there's a kind of a loss yeah. or a, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, you, look, you look good for 58, he looks good, doesn't he? <laughs> it's the lights, it's the lights. <laughs> it's the lights, it's the lights. It's the, lights. <laughs> it's the, lights. Um, the throat. Well, if, you, if we have all this functioning, yeah, and you know, I can possibly say, I can sit here talking today, if you asked me to do this 10 years ago, I wouldn't have come and spoke to you, you know. Because you'd say this is a bit of baloney. I didn't, I didn't have to believe in me. Okay. And okay. I can honestly say <coughs> confidently now, speaking my truth. And that is a truth that I'm working with every day. I'm seeing it in lots of people. It's been handed back to me. And when I ask certain questions, I'm getting good answers. So now my throat chakra, I can speak about it. But I truly think that if the person, again, has the confidence and belief in themselves and they're listening to their intuition, their inner voice, and they're finding that presence in their heart, that they have respect for who they are, they'll confidently speak. They'll speak their truth. They won't just go around blabbing the way people blab. You know, people speak for the sake of speaking because they don't want to hear the noise in their head. And then you're looking at neck pain, throat issues, you know, all these things that get stuck here because people are just wasting their voice nearly, you know. Mm, mm. The person who's full of anxiety. <coughs> you know, we all know anxious people who won't stop talking, but it's like, holy God, I can't listen there anymore. Not, you know what I mean? It's just, what are they talking about? My ears are sore because they well, the can't to be a, down, you know. Yeah, the trout to be a big one in Ireland as well because yeah. a lot of people would kind of, yeah. for years, wouldn't speak their truth. They'd kind of yeah. keep... You know, we don't like to complain, we don't like to kind of say negative stuff. But I think that's all changed and people are becoming much more assertive. Yeah. And, but have you, ex have you worked with someone on the throat, on the throat yeah, side of things? Yeah, again, it's, you know... The is it that cliche, you're not speaking your truth? Is that the... It's, yeah. 
it, it doesn't get any clearer, you know. Yeah. Anything going on the esophagus, the thymus gland, thirdness, uh, you know, anything, all those those glands that are there, the important ones. Yeah, it's it's what's the other one? The, you have the thymus gland and the Jesus, I'm losing me. The thyroid, yeah. Mm. You know that that thyroid gland that brings your whole energy down. You know, get talking to these people and ask them about themselves and it just all comes out what they're hiding. I can tell you, I, we spoke about this story the last time and I can tell you because she doesn't mind me sharing this, she wants to share it with the world, my partner's mother. She had a lifelong, a life of, with a lot of sorrow in it, a lot of stuff that, very personal to her and very, very, very hard for her to deal with and her way of dealing with it was to just not speak it. Um, and 14, 15 years ago, she got a problem called uh, myasthenia gravis. It, it's all connected with the thymus gland. The treatment is to take the thymus gland out because the white blood cells are attacking your immune system. So they take the, the thymus gland out so you can't pr produce the white cells. You need them, they're your soldiers. But they're in overdrive, so whip it away, give her medication, keep her immune system suppressed. But that's what she's been doing all her life, suppressing her feelings, yeah? So, she goes away to live in the sun and live happily ever after, and she does for a number of years, and then she gets cancer. And where does she get the cancer? In her lung. We hold deep sorrow in our lungs. It's full of these deep, tiny little capillaries, and when stuff gets down into them, like feelings, if you look at Chinese medicine, they talk about dampness in the lungs, but when mm. stuff gets in there deep, that deep sorrow, we tend to hold it in there. So she develops pneumonia and then a lung tumour. It's like, oh, you have a tumour on your lung. They have to leave that alone till they clear the pneumonia. And in a short period of three months, that tumour grew from being maybe four centimetres to 12 and a half. But where does it attach itself? Onto her heart which is where the real pain has been all her life. And then they tell her they can't cure her cancer. They can't do anything with it. So to be able to sit with, it was a great example of being able to sit with her and speak to her and have really deep conversations and the light bulb going off over the head going, really, that's what I've been doing to myself all my life. To hell with this, so I'm getting rid of this. And sh we had these deep conversations along with natural medicine yeah and boom it's gone three years later doesn't that took three years for her for her to heal that three months three months to heal it her to get back on her feet but wow. for her to understand what she was locking in emotionally and to watch those parts of her body produce the illnesses mm. i'm not using my voice i'm in deep sorrow because of the pain my heart is affected the illness all comes into those areas you know mm. And that's what I'm seeing. And I can speak about her because she told me this. She made videos of it. She told me, tell the world, I want them all to know. But I've met that so many times with other people that I obviously, it's private in the clinic. I can't speak about it, but all the time. I want to talk a bit, before we get to the third eye, which is kind of the mystical one and the crown and stuff, I want to talk a little bit about emotions um, and how to, how you would advise people to hold tricky emotions, to hold sadness. Yeah. If, if all your life you've been kind of suppressing it or running away from it or not wanting to feel it, what's, and I'm kind of answering the question as I ask it, so what's the way to deal with those really tricky, emotions. heavy emotions? Yeah. The first thing, obviously, is to admit that they're there, to own them, because most people don't own them because they're too scary. So they really are, it's not that they don't want to, they'll understand, yeah, I run around angry all day or I run around sad or depressed, but it's very hard to own that. So a lot of times you do need help with it. You need to find good people that can help guide you through it. <clears throat> um, on your own to work with it, meditation is definitely a form of working with it, excuse me. Um, but meditation on its own even, isn't going to be the answer fully, you know, but it definitely needs you to be focused and understand that this issue is, I always say to people, who's driving your bus? Is it sadness? Is it anger? Is it happiness? Is it, you know, which emotion is in the front seat? 
what's there all the time. When you wake up in the morning, how do you feel? Do you trudge through your day? Do you put your shoes on slowly, you know? Is it an effort to face the world? That's driving your bus. Do you really want that to be there all the time? Is that being led by an emotion that you've carried that's been learned behavior from your family, like you were saying earlier? It's all there, right? But can we get that into the back seat? Because it's always gonna be a part of you. If you understand it and can break through it, it'll make you so much stronger. But you have to start on a daily basis. This is where mindfulness comes in. You know, how do I put my shoe on in the morning? Do I struggle? Can I lift my leg up? Can I, am I flexible enough in this area to bend down and do it properly? The little tiny things. How do I put my feet on the ground when I wake up in the morning? Do I look in the mirror and go, I don't like that? Or do I look in the mirror and go, hmm, that's okay. Because many of you guys out there look in the mirrors and go, oh, I have to fix this, I have to fix that. And I fix it all up and then I sit in the car and go, oh, am I all right? I've just fixed it five minutes ago and I'm checking it again. And then before I go out of the car and checking it again, it's all this stuff is pulling us back all the time, all the time, the little things. And that's where it starts, okay. breaking those little things. What meditation, is there a particular type of meditation that you teach or? Um, I teach, I do lots of guided meditations, but for the chakra system, um, I just get people to breathe into those spaces because again, breath work is so, so important because... Are you talking so about Wim Hof or are you talking about... Just breathe. Just pranayama, some Not even, focus breath. Just, just quite simply realizing that we have a pair of lungs, becoming aware of your lungs. How deep can you actually breathe into your lungs? Because most people are only breathing into about a quarter of their lungs, <laughs> and especially the person that has anxiety. They're never getting their breath down. Like our lungs are right down here. And you know, as you start to practice breathing and do deep, relaxed breathing, just not the Wim Hof stuff, not the big, deep yoga stuff, because that, that, you have to build up to that. That's mm. hard work. Mm. Just quite simply to sit there and breathe through your nose and see how far that breath goes in. To become aware that I'm actually breathing. We forget, people forget that they're breathing. I mean, it's a simple thing where you just breathe into, maybe breathe into the chakra that houses that emotion and just on the out breath to let go of that sadness, to let go of that grief. Yeah. You feel that that actually works for people? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. Yeah. I want to talk a little bit about Hatsumi, okay? Yeah. So um, people know probably um, he's a bit of a, he's still going, right? He's 90 now. He's 90. He's retired now. Yeah. He just retired in the last few weeks. And he's one of the top men in the world of uh, healing, amatsu, yeah. and martial arts. And you did, you trained with him. Yeah, yeah. And it's a you've great story you told the last time about um, what, how, you, how you graduated. Yeah, yeah. Um, what's the biggest teaching, the biggest learning that you took away from someone like Hatsumi? Well, as he got older, I met him in his mid-50s, um, and he was still had that real hard warrior spirit in him, real training hard, you know, hitting hard, the whole lot. Um, as martial artists do when they're younger men, the, the warriors, it, it's a warrior system he teaches. But ultimately, he speaks about the, the benevolent heart and Buddha meaning friendship. So martial arts being about that, about having the right heart. Because they always, you know, when we were younger and you heard this, the best way, way to win a fight is to walk away. And you're like, I'm not walking away from a fight. I want to test my skills, you know. But I'd run away from a fight, no yeah. problem. <laughs> Truly, you know, <laughs> the sensible thing is, yeah, don't yeah. get into the fight. Have a benevolent heart. Have a, it's not about beating people up. It's about loving people. And his teaching has been a lifelong lesson. His life, watching him grow old, watching him soften, watching him train softer rather than hard, and listening to him speaking about this life lesson has been very interesting. And this all comes back to what we're talking about on the healing side and the emotions, because if you can, you know in martial arts, sometimes more when you look at something like judo, yeah. it's more like a dance, it's more like the guy moves that way and you kind of flow that way to allow him to come into your yeah. space. So it's kind of like a dance, you know? It's like a game of chess. Yeah, it's like a beautiful, non-violent form of communication yeah. in its purest form. Mm. So also what's making me think about that is that when somebody 
has an experience in their life that kind of is traumatic, that if you expand and allow that traumatic experience to kind of come into you and you kind of open up to it, it's less harmful than you resisting it, right? Absolutely. So it's the same, it's just a correlation with martial well, arts, you know? When you, when you fight as a martial artist at a high level, what you understand, and one of the most popular martial arts on the planet at the moment is Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. It's a combination of um, Japanese Jiu Jitsu, which is a stand up fighting art, and, uh, and Judo. And it's been developed really well to a standard that's incredible. But when you roll, they call it rolling. When you roll with an advanced BJJ guy, you wouldn't believe how soft they get. They, everybody sees that as jump in and punch. That's what we think a fight is. These guys actually surrender in, in the fight. They give up. They just, they nearly lie there and just go, come on. But in doing that, in surrendering, they're leaving themselves prepared for any scenario. It's called a zero point. And Hatsumi spoke about this all the time. Go, always going to zero, surrender. And as you surrender, you're prepared for anything that might come to you. Where if you're focused on one thing, you can lose the fight. If I'm focused on his right arm going to smack me on the chin, he just might kick me with his left foot. But if I open myself up to all possibilities, I'll be ready for everything. Now with trauma, if we accept we have it, if we learn about it and understand it, and then surrender and accept this is part of who I am. This is part of what has got me to this point in my life today. Another thing the Japanese do, and Hatsumi did this, when he was a younger man, he had a very serious illness. And when he got through that illness, he changed his name. His name wasn't always Hatsumi. I forget what it was previously. When the Japanese, the traditional Japanese person, understands that they have an illness, and let's say I'm 40 years old and I have cancer, and it's almost gonna kill me, but I survive it, right. I don't want to be that person that I was for the last 40 years because it brought me to that. I want to be a different person now that doesn't bring me to that for the next 40 years. So I surrender to it all and accept it for what it was and then I change everything I have to change to leave that behind. Leave it in the back of the bus. Who's driving my bus, you know? And fighting is very similar. At that high level, they just surrender. I, I love that, you know, you I love, at, yeah. If you look at a dog or a cat, as we know, <coughs> domesticated, you see a dog in a fight and the other dog is beaten, what does it do? It just lies on its back and puts its legs up in the air and exposes its vulnerability. You have me, stop killing me please, you won. That's what animals do. If you see a lion with an antelope in its mouth, the antelope just goes still. It, does, it stops fighting and its eyes will be open, it'll be breathing, it just accepts and it's okay. This is what's meant to be. Mm -hmm. We fight with ourselves all the time. There's yeah. such power in vulnerability, yeah. in surrender, yeah, uh, yeah and non-resistance. Mm. There's so much power in it. People, it, like to get that is a real interesting shift when you kind of get that in your life. It's like, wow, you know. If um, we panic in the midst of a real trauma, like the big one out there is cancer. We all know cancer kills people. None of us want to be told you have cancer. But if I'm told I have cancer and I panic, it makes it worse because I'm feeding it with panic. I'm feeding it with fear. If I accept that and surrender to it and then look at my options, I just might be able to mm. realize why I have it and now work from the deepest part of my being, my emotional self, my fears, can I switch them now and look at this in a completely different way, accept it for, thank it for the lessons it's going to teach me and move on from there. Yeah. And just to finish on Hatsumi, but just you, you told me before that he had an ability when he was engaging with somebody to kind of take control of their centre, which would be kind of something Bruce Lee would have done as well. So he would anticipate um, I suppose he would expand, but then how do you take control of someone's centre? They do it on an energy level. They really can. They, Hatsumi would be someone that 
I've seen a lot of times up close and personal. And in later years, when I was going to the dojo in Japan, I can see energy very clear these days. And it's something I was developing over time. But to watch him in the middle of the floor with people coming at him, I could actually see the energy he was throwing out. So his aura is just so much bigger. And it's so dense that as you go to attack him, it's almost like he can feel it coming at you. So he's already beaten you with that before you get to him. But not, not only that, if he's sensing that, and I've never spoke to him personally to ask him this, but I'm guessing, if somebody can sense that outside of themselves and something's coming into that space, they're already gonna be out of the way before the punch comes. They're, all, they're not going to be there. They're gonna just shift. And because it's like a magnet, try and push two magnets together. They, those guys that are up at that level can throw that at you, you know. Mm. That's mm. what they're doing. You know? <clears throat> so, Mark, what I'd like to do now is, I um, just want to check where we are at time. Okay, so I'd like to kind of give people a little taste of how you work, okay? Mm. So we could do a little meditation around the chakras okay. and bring people in just for like five minutes or so, ten minutes. Seven breaths. Perfect. Yeah. Each chakra? Yeah. Okay. People up for that? Yeah. Okay, let's try that. Okay. You can all hear me okay? Yeah. So the, the most important thing before we do anything is get yourself comfortable. Just make sure you're absolutely comfortable. So check in with yourself. Close your eyes. And then check in with yourself again. Really ask yourself, are you comfortable? And then acknowledge the fact that you're breathing. Breathe very gently in through your nose and out through your nose. Don't make a sound and make it effortless, but deep. Try and find parts of your lungs that you've forgotten about. Nice, long, effortless, deep breaths. And as you breathe out, allow yourself to relax. Every time you breathe out, allow yourself to relax some more. Then, in your own time, on your next in-breath, imagine the energy of your breath flowing into the center of your chest, into your heart. Just see, can you get a sense of the energy of your breath? And again, relax as you breathe out. Then, I want you to think of the color red. Just think about it for a moment. And on your next in-breath, imagine that breath being of the color red, mm -hmm. and you're taking it down to the base of your spine. Nice, long, slow, deep breath. Hold it for a moment, and as you breathe out, just imagine that red energy flow up your spine and out to the top of your head. Take your time, and breathe slowly. Then think of the color orange, and take the next breath down into your body to about two inches below your navel. And again, at the end of that breath, hold it there for a moment. And as you slowly exhale, see it traveling up your spine. Imagine it pouring out through the top of your head. 
next color is yellow. <coughs> Breathe in to your solar plexus, right into the center of your body. Again, hold yourself, hold the breath at the end. Acknowledge that part of your body. And as you breathe out, just see that color travel up your spine and out through the top of your head. Next time you breathe in is into your heart. And the color is green. Nice and slow. Just fill your heart with that green energy. Hold it in there for a moment. Relaxing as you breathe out. Let that energy flow up your spine. And again, out through the top of your head. Start to picture it like a volcano. Imagine it flowing up your spine, out through the top of your head and just surrounding you with colors. The next breath is into your throat. And the color is blue. Again, nice, long, deep breath. Hold the energy in your throat. And when you're ready to breathe out, just give it permission to flow up through your head and flow down around you. Next breath, think of the color of violet. And take the energy of your breath up to the center of your forehead, into your third eye. Relaxing as you breathe. When you're ready to breathe out, just let it flow out the top of your head. And imagine at this stage all those colors just building around you, filling your aura, making you bigger, making you stronger. And the next time you breathe in, take the breath or the energy of the breath up to your crown chakra, right on the top of your head. Think of the color white, Hold it there for a moment, and then release it out through the top of your head. Just imagine that energy flowing all down around you, encasing you in all those colors. Just allow each breath that you continue to use to go back and repeat and build. Just stay with your breathing. And then slowly let it go. Just allow yourself to come back into the room. So are they all healed now, Mark? Yeah. <laughs> so thanks for coming. Um, you're all healed. Just on that, there's, on my website, there's um, a half hour meditation, <coughs> with, and that's the meditation. So if you wanted to practice it at home, it's really good practice to do on a daily basis to just, what, what I f really feel this gives you, again, if you jump back to last year's conversation and we spoke about a lot of the medicine works I did, and where I really found this work in, in a sense of when I was in an altered state and 
my awareness was very focused on self as I would do those breaths. You're talking about psychedelics now, yeah, yeah. ayahuasca. But as I would do those breaths on an ayahuasca journey, I would feel like somebody needs to take the roof off the building here. You could get a sense of how big you can go when you empower yourself at that level. And it takes practice and time. But as a daily practice, that's only seven breaths. It doesn't take long. Um, and to just, it's not that I have to see the colors, but to set the intention for that's what I'm doing. And very quickly, seven breaths becomes 14 breaths and 21 breaths and so on. And all of a sudden, you can find yourself sitting there for half an hour, breathing like that. And it's very, very empowering, very empowering. You walk away feeling well, you know, so. Did people feel that? Yeah? yeah. Felt good? Okay. Um, we're gonna have a little break. Uh, we'll take a 10 minute break. People wanna grab a coffee, there's water there. Uh, have a little chat and then we'll come back in the second half and ask you guys then to ask Mark your questions. But let's give him a round of applause, yeah?